Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. We discuss different techniques that you can utilize to manifest and create your reality regularly on this podcast. One of the most popular techniques is affirmation and mantra, the power of your voice to declare your reality. But I believe one of the most powerful techniques is the power of the decree. You are God. You have the power of God and you can decree whatever you want. Oftentimes when we're giving affirmations or mantras, there is this hope that maybe, just maybe this might work. This might just reprogram our subconsciousness. But there is a particular skill that Jesus used and that is the power of the decree. When we contemplate methods of God realization, we must include the power of the spoken word. For many years, religions have used ritual and form together with spoken mantras. In the West, these have been called responsive readings for they require the response of the congregation or the audience participation. In some instances, the prayers have become vainly repetitious and devoid of meaning. It is fitting that we should comprehend the proper use of decrees. Jesus once said, Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of the judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Decrees are not careless words. They are careful words. And the patterns which I recommend are invocative of the highest good for man. Decrees are generally composed of three parts, and they should be thought of as letters to God. One, the salutation of the degree is invocative. It is addressed to the individualized God presence of every son and daughter of God and to those servants of God who make up the spiritual hierarchy. This salutation, the preamble to the decree, when reverently given, is a call that compels the answer from God and the ascended ones. We could no more refuse to answer this summons in our octave than could your fireman refuse to answer a call for help in yours. The purpose of the salutation then is to engage immediately the energies of the ascended masters in answering the body of your letter to God, which you so lovingly vocalize individually or in unison. Secondly, the body of your letter is composed of statements phrasing your desires, the qualifications you would invoke for self or others, and the supplications that would be involved even in ordinary prayer. Having released the power of the spoken word through your outer consciousness, your subconscious mind, and your superconscious or higher self, you can rest assured that the supreme consciousness of the ascended masters, angels, higher selves, higher beings, whom you have invoked, is also concerned with the manifestation of that which you have called forth. Three, now you come to the close of your decree, the acceptance, the sealing of the letter in the heart of God released with a sense of commitment into the realm of the spirit whence manifestation must return to the world of material form according to the unerring laws of alchemy, the all chemistry of God, and precipitation, as St. Germain referred to it. Those who understand the power of the square in mathematics will realize that when groups of individuals are engaged in invoking the energies of God, they're not merely adding power by the number of people in the group on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but they are entering into a very old covenant of the square which squares the release of power to accomplish the spoken word by the number of individuals who are decreeing and by the number of times that each decree is given. I heartily recommend individual decrees to accomplish untold blessings in the lives of those who will discipline themselves in this ritual of invoking light to a darkened world. But group decreeing when accompanied by an intense visualization of the good desired is much more efficient on a world scale than just an individual decree. 
and will result in a speedy response to those engaged in it, not only to themselves, but also on behalf of all mankind. It should be borne in mind that whenever good is invoked in the world of form, surrounded as the world is today by a great accumulation of mortal effluvia, the light that is released from on high in answer to the call is automatically opposed by the negative vibrations already existing in the atmosphere of the earth. Rhythm is also important in decrees. Proper rhythm creates a most penetrating projection of spiritual vibrations that will magnetize all over the planet the qualities of God that are being invoked through the decrees. The momentum of these waves that form undulating circles over the entire planet creates an intensification of light wherever devotees come together to participate in a like endeavor. The laws governing the manifestation and distribution of physical light also apply to the flow of the currents of spiritual light. Spiritual qualities are distributed around the planetary body from every radiating focus of love. Let no one feel, then, a sense of separation in their service to hierarchy, for by the power of decrees issued forth at any point upon the earth's surface, the current of light and life and love from the heart of God can be unleashed as electrical radiating waves to make their impact in the world and bring back the invoker the God-ordained response. The statement, Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee, is an ancient maxim that sets forth the law governing decrees. For man created in the image of God has the self-same power to actuate which was used by God in the beginning when he said, let there be light, and there was light. We know full well that individuals who come into meetings and encounter these decrees for the first time without understanding the laws governing them or the beautiful results that can be obtained through their use can well come under the influence of certain negative forces and entities in the world that quite naturally are diametrically opposed to the use of decrees. Too frequently, individuals who stress their desire for quiet meditation fail to take into account that there is a time and a place for quiet meditation, a time and a place for prayer, and a time and a place for decrees. All three can be used in service. All three can be used in the home, individually or in groups, as one desires, but one form of worship is not a substitute for the other. I release this information because the world needs this teaching on this subject. After all, consciousness is one. The individual who dwells in God can pour out his heart to God in prayer, in song, in decrees, or sit silently meditating upon an aspect of deity. Thought precedes worded expression, or at least it should. Therefore, to meditate or think upon God is one way of expressing him. Decreeing is another. Because decrees are of such great benefit to all of us, I urge that those who in the past may have failed to appreciate fully the significance of decrees, those who may have taken a position against them, shall consider their stand in the light of the cosmic knowledge which I have now released. Decrees are synthesized manifestations of the heart of each one who decrees. Decrees draw together and focalize the power of the spoken word the visualization of the Christ mind, and the rhythm of the divine pulse. When you decree, you are releasing divinely qualified energy charged by your invocation and multiplied by the power of the masters and entities, angels and higher density beings that you are working with. It goes forth to do its perfect work for the application of the power of light upon the entire planet. The proper use of decrees takes practice. Individuals should not expect. The first time they make a call, the very perfection of the universe will sweep away all the accumulated debris of their lives. Proper decreeing is an art, and as one gains greater proficiency, they will find it possible to speed up their decrees. That is, they will be able to speed up the rate at which they are given. They will also be able to understand what is taking place as they speed them up. For this acceleration by raising the rate of their own electronic pattern throws off and transmutes 
negative thoughts and feelings in this world. What a delight and peace you can bring to your family, to your friends, and to yourself through the proper use of decrees. What freedom, how glorious the world can be changed for the better with your power of decree. By the power of the word, the earth was framed. And by the power of the word, the freedom of man shall be dominantly asserted in God's name. Use your decrees. Fear not the opinions of others, for the hierarchy has spoken, and those who heed will profit. Jesus said, My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. All men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. I can of my own self do nothing, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. The mystery of the Christ, the divine word or logos, the only begotten Son of the Father is one which has baffled and confused all of us since the fall of man, since his descent into material consciousness, you might say. The restoration of mankind from the place of what they call the sinner to which they have been relegated by the forces of unrighteous condemnation to that of joint heirs with Christ must be accomplished if mankind is to obtain its freedom in this age. It is recorded in the book of John that Jews sought to kill Jesus because he said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. To this day, the scribes and Pharisees denounce those who dare to acknowledge their own heritage as sons of God. Jesus' claim to his divinity was based on the understanding that he, being created in the image of God, as were all men in the beginning, possessed all of the attributes of God himself, not in quantity, but in quality, even as every drop of the ocean contains the essential nature of the whole. Jesus knew, as few men before or since have known, that he was the Son of God. He never claimed that he was the only Son of God, but those who heard his words, who had not reached this higher understanding, refused to claim their own divine sonship. While some rebuked him for his declaration, others fell down and worshipped in him that which they were not able to realize within themselves. Those who followed after him, the early scribes and priests, had even less understanding of the universal manifestation of the Christ in every son of God, in every man, woman, and child, and thus the erroneous doctrine that Jesus is the only son of God handed down from generation to generation has divided Western civilization and kept mankind en masse from fulfilling their divine destiny. All of Neville Goddard's writings are talking about this, but it's not just Neville, it's the many other authors that I've read on my podcast. When the statement of Jesus concerning the Father and Son are explained in the light of understanding who indeed the Son of God is, the modern disciple will understand why and how he may decree effectively. The Christ, as the only begotten Son of the Father, is the only true heir of God. This Son of God is your own true imagination, the real you whom God made in his image and likeness. This likeness never fell into disrepute, but remains inviolate as the Christ, the beloved Holy Christ self of every man and woman. Human consciousness, or the carnal nature, has rejected the Christ since the fall of Adam and Eve, for the lesser self, or the prodigal son, whom we may think of as man in the state of becoming the Christ, by the power of free will, chose to abide in the consciousness of limitation rather than that of limitless expression which is gained when one submits himself unreservedly to the will of God. Those who truly understand the mystery of the Christ have seen that even as there is one God, one Father, so there is one Christ, one Son. 
It is the nature of the infinite to multiply being infinitely. Infinite differentiation is the meaning of God and still remain as one. One times one times one ad infinitum always equals one. Thus, God the Father and God the Son may be actualized in man and in woman over and over again and still remain the divine one. All of us share in this oneness and have within us the essence of the divine nature. God individualized as what St. Germain refers to as the mighty I am presence of every son and daughter and the Christ individualized as the holy Christ self of each one. Without God and the Word, the Christ that was with him in the beginning, no manifestation was made. No man was created without being infused with a portion of God and a portion of the Christ. I say all this to give you at least a religious background. And for many of you, you probably have skipped ahead or already canceled this episode. But it's important because when you're making these decrees, you're making a decree just like God made the decree, let there be light. When you understand who you are and your power, then your decrees are always going to come true very effectively because you are the power. You are declaring this power. You're not trying to change your subconscious mind. You're not affirming something and hoping that it's true in the future. You're decreeing it. To decree or to command the energies of life is the prerogative of this Christ identity, this God self, this higher self of every one of us, the human self being imperfect and incomplete has not yet been given the authority to utter fiats of creative direction. And thus he must always decree in the name of the beloved, mighty, victorious presence of God, or I am in me and my own beloved, holy Christ self. The more and more you do this, you realize your true divinity and you declare and decree without having to decree in anybody's name but yourself. Realizing, as Jesus did, that it is his divine destiny to become a co-creator with God, the disciple of the masters, takes his decree in hand and begins right where he is, in whatever state of consciousness you find yourself, to decree for the necessary changes to take place in your world, whereby you can and will become reunited with the Father through the mediatorship of the Holy Christ Self. Thus recognizing your present limitations and inadequacies, you acknowledge the omnipotence of God to overcome all obstacles of the flesh and to renew your consciousness by the power of what they refer to as the Holy Spirit. This Spirit manifests in the sacred fire blazing as the threefold flame on the very altar of your heart in the secret chamber. This flame has three plumes, pink, blue, and yellow. It is approximately one sixteenth of an inch in height in the average individual, and it is the focus of God in man, which sustains their life. It actually causes the heartbeat from which all other bodily functions derive their impetus. It's also been referred to as the Nous Adam in other episodes. It is a special place within you that is your God spark. And this spark could be as big as the largest universe or as tiny as the smallest atom, but it is within you and has always been within you through all your lives. That is who you are. That is the portion of you that is a part of the divine whole. The decree or divine fiat, the decreer, and the answer to the decree comprises a threefold manifestation of God himself. The decreer must recognize that God in me is giving this decree. It is God's energy that flows forth to obey your command. And you are the fulfilling of the law by the power of the spoken word, which is manifesting in you. The lesser self is thus an instrument for the light that comes forth from the heart of God to coalesce as manifest perfection. You are not the source of the light, neither are you the dictator of creation, and you do not have any power of your own to cause that light to obey your command until you become aware of who you truly are. Therefore, If the disciple will determine to raise their consciousness to the level of the higher self and know that you are in reality that beloved son, you being one with God will present yourself a living sacrifice consecrated to purity 
in order that God's light, God's word, and God's decree will flow through you to manifest the perfect work of the Creator. Thus, having established in your mind the realization of who is the doer, I am, God is, the open door which no man can shut, the disciple may begin the sacred ritual of offering decrees in the name of the Father, Mother, God, the I Am Presence, the Son, the Universal Christ, the universe which manifests in every man as their own beloved Holy Christ Self, and the Holy Spirit, the energies of the sacred fire that endow form and consciousness with the essence of God that is life. So this video is how to decree. So let's talk about it. Before actually speaking the words of the decree, sit in a comfortable straight chair in a well-lighted room where you will be undisturbed, taking care that the room has been tidy, cleaned, well aired, dust, stale air and poor lighting reduce the effectiveness of some decrees because these impede the flow of light and repel the angelic hosts who always assist the supplicant in amplifying the release of God's holy energies. Visualize the presence of God above you, your lower self, enveloped in the violet flame, administered by your holy, higher Christ self. And visualize the spark, or the threefold flame pulsing and expanding from your heart. The blue plume to your left, the pink plume to your right, and the yellow plume in the center. Hold your spine and head erect, your legs and hands uncrossed, and your feet flat on the floor. Some say that poor posture opens the consciousness to negative forces, because the solar plexus, which is the doorway of the emotions, is not in control. Crossing the legs and hands causes a short circuiting of the energies, which are intended to flow through the individual when decreeing or blessing. Therefore, remember Paul's words, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? And let the energies of God flow through your body. If my words do not resonate with you, then find some other way to become aware of the God presence. For some people, it's easier to do it in other ways. If you've written down your decrees on a piece of paper or a book, hold the book at eye level so that you do not lean down while decreeing it. You may prefer to sit at a desk or table where you can prop up your paper or book in front of you, thus leaving your hands free and resting palms up to decree the blessings of God. Speak the decree slowly and clearly without strain until you can fully comprehend the meaning of its content. Then concentrate upon the rhythm and begin to give it more quickly. You will see how your mind can learn to follow with lightning speed the concepts and release of power that come as you recite with greater facility. It's important to breathe deeply and regularly using the power of the fire breath of God to project the light through your entire body and then out into the world to bless all of life with the magnetization of God's energy focused through your own heart flame, your God spark, your inner light. When decreeing for loved ones, first call to your own I am holy presence, the holy Christ self, as worded in the preamble of the decree you're giving. Then insert in the preamble your call to the mighty I am presence and the holy Christ self. Give the name of the person for whom you wish to decree. By calling to the God presence of those in need of spiritual assistance, you open up the fount of heaven into their worlds so that all of the divine blessings of light may flow forth to heal whatever condition of imperfection may be manifesting therein. This service may be rendered without becoming personally involved in a given situation. For masters, by your calls are given the authority to move in and take command of any place, person, condition, or thing to which you in the name of God may direct their attention. Many of the decrees I have read, particularly by those that follow St. Germain, use the following ending. And in full faith, I consciously accept this manifest, manifest, manifest right here and now with full power, eternally sustained, all powerfully active, ever expanding 
and world enfolding until all are wholly ascended in the light and free. Beloved I am, beloved I am, beloved I am. That's one very common way to end these decrees. The full acceptance of a decree made manifest in your world is most important for it is right here in the physical octave. The light of God is needed. Through the giving of decrees, the supplicant draws down the light from the higher octaves of perfection to lower octaves of human imperfection. We do not need to perfect God or his Christ, but we do require change in this world of chaos, disease, unhappiness, and death. These changes can be brought about only by drawing forth the light of God and the conscious acceptance of that light, which never fails to give man his freedom whenever and wherever he determines to give his energy in decrees until God can manifest his perfect work in him. Without consciously accepting the answer to your decrees made manifest, the pure energies of God may very well remain in the higher octaves of being, a matrix unfulfilled in matter and untethered to the world of material form. The spoken word is the key to drawing the light from heaven to earth. You will remember that Jesus, when he healed, always spoke the command that released the light in order to manifest on the physical plane that perfection which he acknowledged was already complete in the kingdom of heaven. In the account of the raising of Lazarus, we note that Jesus employed the power of the spoken word to release the energy from the plane of spirit to the plane of matter for the restoration of the life force. It is recorded that they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. It is also known that he spoke as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Now that's important. You're speaking with authority. That is what somebody that is decreeing does. They're speaking with an authority. They set out a decree. If the king makes a decree, it is so. The power of the spoken word is the authority of the creative process itself. The first decree ever given again, spoken by God, was let there be light. And there was light. The response from the heart of God was instantaneous. And so the divine logos went forth to manifest as form and consciousness expanding in the infinite sea of God's being. Decrees are thus spoken by man because it is the power of the word and no other power in the universe that is able to create, to resurrect, to transmute, and to perfect the divine image in the sons and daughters of God. Therefore, decrees should always be given aloud and only when it is impossible to do so should they be offered silently. The light from the presence is released through various centers or chakras focused in the body of man. As you decree, the power of the word flows forth from the throat center. This center should be visualized as emitting an electric blue ray. The heart center is animated by the threefold flame, the point at the center of the forehead, which is the focus of the all seeing eye of God. The third eye is emerald green and the golden radiance or halo of the Christ is at the top of the head. Concentration is of the utmost importance when decreeing, for it is over the flow of man's attention that the energies of the presence travel to fulfill the spoken word. Contrary to the concept of most students who take up the science of giving decrees, concentration is a quality of heart rather than of the mind. Your center of attention should be in the heart flame at all times while you decree. For here is your own individual focus of God's power, wisdom, and love. This practice will avoid mental strain and undue pressure on those chakras that are less developed in most of us. Decreeing is a function of the heart and of our devotion, the intellect, which has for far too long ruled the heart in most people, must be re-educated to obey the heart's call and to be obedient to the intuitive powers of the heart, which most often do reflect the inner voice of our higher self. 
check out the Transurfing episodes that I've read about the mind and the heart. If the attention is riveted on the desired manifestation and the mind's eye is visualizing the decree made manifest, the results will be infinitely more effective than if the mind wanders, the feelings are absorbed in various distractions, and the eyes gaze at random about the room. As you become familiar with the words of the decrees, you may close your eyes and see taking place before you the action you are invoking. This process known as visualization is based on our ability to image forth or to imagine. Imagination is God, as Neville Goddard tells us. Use this creative faculty to see each word or descriptive phrase as a thought pattern or matrix, a cup or chalice held steady in heart and mind in order that God's energy may flow into your cup of consciousness to energize and manifest perfection in the world of form. So let's create a decree. We can do it now using what I've taught you. I sit up, I relax, I focus on my heart. I see the intensity of my heart and the light around me. And I say, beloved mighty I am presence, O God, thou life that beats my heart, come now and take dominion. Make me of thy life a part. Rule supreme and live forever in the flame ablaze within. I decree by my power that peace, stillness, and love take over the lands of Israel and Ukraine and Russia. I call to the mighty I am presence and holy Christ self of all of those people in all those countries to find love and peace, to let go of antagonisms and let go of violence. And in full faith, I consciously accept this manifest, manifest, manifest right here and now with full power, eternally sustained, all powerfully active, ever expanding in world enfolding until all are wholly ascended in the light and free. Beloved I am. Beloved I am. Beloved I am. Doesn't need to be that complicated. You don't need to say all that stuff. You can just simply say, I decree. I decree that I am prosperous by the name of God for which I am. I decree that I am of radiant and perfect health in my body and mind. By my decree, this shall be done. Beloved, mighty I am presence within me and for all those that hear my voice. For all those that hear my voice, I call upon your I am presence that beats in your heart, that rules your life, and I call upon that for you to find instantaneous success, happiness, joy, and bliss today and ever forward, all things working out with harmony, joy, and happiness for you, for all. For all are one. It is so. As I said, learning how to decree is an art. And you want to feel an emotion when you make your decree. It needs to come up through you. You want to feel it. But these are things that are taught by a number of other people, particularly from the channelings of Saint Germain in his teachings on how to decree. And here's the hard thing that took me a while to understand. You only have to decree once. You don't think that God decreed, let there be light over and over like a thousand times until he saw the light. You are God making a decree. Sometimes using a pattern, rhythm, or form helps you to do it. But whatever way you do it, your words are all powerful. So saying these words out loud and making a decree for the things that you want for yourself and others in the name of God, focusing your power of the heart and your mind, all things can happen. So you just need to say it once you make your decree and your decree will be known. Let there be light. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution.